zapical aortic valve implantation without pre-ballooning a propensity scored matched analysis. This will be presented by Alexander Meyer. Good morning, colleagues, dear chairman. In TAVI procedures, it has been common sense so far to perform a balloon valvuloplasty. The rationale for this has, has been mainly because uh, it is necessary to open, it was thought to be uh, necessary to open up the stenotic valve orifice in order that the delivery system, which is relatively bulky so far, uh, can cross the valve. So the Edwards Ascendra 2 Plus delivery system adds a new design feature, which is a yellow nose cone, which you can see here. This has the potential to make this tra this, the transition of the valve more smooth and making it possible to maybe omit the um, pre-ballooning. So we aimed in our study to assess the potential pros and potential cons. First of all, a potential pro could be a procedure simplification. Also, um, the omission of one additional step could save time and radiation time. And it could lead to reduced neurological event rates because balloon valvuloplasty itself is associated with, with an increase in neurological events. However, there are also potential cons which needs to be assessed. It could lead to higher post-procedural gradients. It could lead to higher rate of paravalvular leakage. Maybe there are problems during anticrate valve crossing and the likelihood of less control during final stepwise deployment has to be assessed. So what we did to assess those points, we conducted a retrospective single center cohort studies. We enrolled 128 patients with symptomatic aortic stenosis. And in order to have a valid comparison among groups, we utilized propensity score matching to minimize bias among groups. Also, we defined a priori a subgroup analysis for patients for which CT, valid CT data of the calcium score of the aortic valve was available. For endpoint analysis, we focused on short-term functional and clinical outcomes. And on the lower side of the slide, you can see now our two cohorts. Cohort number one are all patients, all 128 patients. Cohort number two is a subset of cohort one which now has 79 patients with valid CT data. In both groups, uh, approximately 30% of the patients underwent no pre-ballooning. Here you can see a, a typical table one of uh, our patients in cohort one, meaning all patients. And what is now necessary when you want to compare those two groups is to have balanced uh, covariates. And here you can already see there is a signif significant difference in gender distribution. And also there is a difference, also not significant, in the STS PROM score. So now um, we have to, uh, when we utilize propensity score matching, we have to show that we really decrease bias, and that's what, that is what we do with these um, figures. On the left-hand side, you can see the distribution of bias, which we measure by standardized mean difference. Each spot on this side here corresponds to a single covariate, and this spreads around the zero line. Zero meaning basically no, no bias in this covariate. And here you can see a wide spread, and now we aim to reduce this variance, which you can see nicely here it reduced below 20% bias, which indicates good bias reduction. And this visualization can be more elaborated for each individual covariates you see on the right side. So now when we go to the extremes of this plot here and here, we can see on red the bias before matching, here for gender, history of coronary artery disease, um, history of insulin-dependent diabetes and stroke, and this nicely goes to the zero point after matching, which you can see here. Now we can compare our groups. So first of all, let's look at the functional outcome. Anticrate crossing of the stenotic valve was feasible in all no BAV patients. And we did not observe any significant difference in rate of paravalular leakage in mean gradients at discharge in rate of major strokes or TIAs in necessity for rehabilitation or pacemaker implantation. 
When we look at the clinical outcomes, we did not observe any difference in amount of contrast dye used in necessity for rescue valve and valve implantation and 30-day mortality. However, what we did observe was a significant reduction of about 10% of fluoroscopy time, which is plotted on the right-hand side. So now uh, we also wanted to, um, to consider the calcium scores or the anatomical um, variation of the valves. And um, we have one limitation, we did not have um, valid CT data for all patients, so we picked up a subset of all patients which had valid CT data. The sample size was considerably lower with 25 patients, and so we ended up with uh, 25 matched pairs, and you can see a bias reduction, however, more moder modestly as before. And we have one outlier here, which is history of ICA stenosis, the bias here increased actually. So when we now look at the clinical outcomes, we did not observe any statistical difference. Again, in amount of contrast dye, necessity for valve and valve procedure or 30 day mortality. Again, because it's a subset, integrate crossing of the stenotic valve was no problem in all no BAV patients. And we did not observe any difference in rate of paravalular leakage in necessity for redilatation, pacemaker implantation, or mean gradients at discharge. But what we did observe was a higher rate of TIA occurrences in the BAV group. So now to summarize up, what we can say now when we see the results is the potential pros, the, the omission of uh, one additional step leads to a procedure simplification. Also, the radiation time was lower in those patients of the um, BAV omission, which is good for us and the colleagues and patients. And it might lead to a reduction of neurological events. For the potential con sites, we did not observe post-procedural higher gradients. We did not observe higher rates of parallel leakage. We did not have any observation of anterograde valve crossing. And the likelihood of less control during final stepwise deployment was also not observed. So in conclusion, transapical direct valve stenting using the Sapien XT with the Ascendra 2 Plus device is feasible, safe, preserves a stepwise final deployment and does not affect functional outcomes by any means. Thank you. Great, this paper is open also for discussion. As people are thinking of their questions, that, that was an excellent presentation. Great job, uh, Alexander. I, I do have a question for you. Do you have any um, DW MRIs or anything else to show postoperatively uh, or even any hits during, I'm not sure if you're, you're mapping out the, um, the number of hits that can occur intraoperatively, because I think what you're showing, and, and I'm, I'm gonna probably take this back to Emory and stop doing BAVs you know, on our patients when we do TA. I think it's something that we need to move to in, into the future relatively quickly. It'd be nice to show objectively with MRI data or the decreased number of hits in these patients during the BAV time period of one group versus the other to really show that your clinical results are because of the lack of BAV and the hits that can occur during that time period. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So that, that'd be, a, I think, a follow-up study for you guys to do uh, on, this, on this type of um, uh, patient population. What are your thoughts yeah, about that? Yeah, I think so too, but our study now is mainly based on clinical data. We don't know, we don't have observed um, MRI hits. Yeah, or even intraoperatively cerebral embolic hits. Your uh, Alexander was not with us when we did this uh, try with uh, transcranial Doppler back yeah. in Leipzig. So the problem is, first of all, the, the, um, even if you would have MRI scans showing these typical lesions, nobody knows if they are clinical, meaningful, and so on. And also, I would not overrate that finding here that we had in that subgroup of patients showing a lower rate of TIA, because you have, might have seen that in the propensity score matching, there was that one variable, which was the uh, history of uh, carotid stenosis that was not balanced. Mm. So bearing that in mind, I would question a little bit our finding that there's really uh, hard evidence that no BAV will lead to less neurological events. However, and this is why most likely uh, uh, a lot of groups will follow this approach, it simplifies the procedure. There's no downside of it, so why do it? Yep. No, I agree with that. Actually, good, good point. 
just a, tech, a technical comment, I believe what you have to do with this procedure to really carefully watch the wire, that it's more or less right. central, and that you don't force the device, despite a nose cone, into something, not hitting the posterior wall or the mitral valve or whatsoever with the integrated approach, but in most cases it's easily uh, 